China reports a 21 million drop in mobile users for the past three months. Could CCP virus casualties be one of the causes? An expert explains. As virus cases continue increasing around the world, China has been reporting zero new local cases. But local residents tell us otherwise. Senate Democrats block a virus relief bill for the second day in a row. They say it fails to do enough for families, but Republicans criticize them for delaying funding for workers and small businesses. Over 1.5 billion people globally told to stay home to avoid virus spread. This after the UK was the latest to join lockdown. And in the US, federal agencies to build four emergency hospitals in New York this week. Welcome to China In Focus. I'm your host, Tiffany Meyer. For the past four days, Wuhan has reported zero new confirmed cases of the CCP virus. But one resident in Wuhan told us in two communities in his residential area, there were confirmed cases, but no one is allowed to report them. The person added, anyone who tries to report it has to bear the responsibility, so people stay quiet. He believes the only way to change the status quo is when the communist regime collapses. Because he said the Chinese people are now so brainwashed that it goes beyond the imagination of people outside. In recent days, some residential blocks in Wuhan canceled the lockdown, and then they were put on lockdown again. In some residential blocks, announcements were posted about confirmed cases there and reminded residents to be careful. So what's the reason behind this? Our source told us Wuhan authorities said all state-owned enterprises can only resume work after 14 consecutive days of zero cases. People are complying so that work can resume, regardless of what the actual situation is. In China, blood tests were fast, with results available after 15 minutes and cheap, costing under 300 yuan, which is around $40. It was also proven to have a high accuracy rate, but suddenly several hospitals in Wuhan stopped doing them in recent days. A doctor in Wuhan told his friends it's no longer a medical issue, but rather a political one. Will patients who test positive again after having been released from hospital be counted as new confirmed cases? According to the vice head of CDC in Hubei province, these people will not be counted again. So that means even if people do test positive, the new cases can still remain zero. According to a March 22nd report from South China Morning Post, confidential government documents revealed over 43,000 asymptomatic patients infected with the CCP virus in China, but they were not counted in the official numbers. A professor of infectious epidemiology at Hokkaido University in Japan found in his research that about 30 percent of patients diagnosed with the CCP virus were asymptomatic. The World Health Organization classifies all people who test positive as confirmed cases, whether or not they show any symptoms. South Korea does the same, but on January 29th, China's National Health Commission made it clear in a classification that patients will now be divided into suspicious, confirmed, and positive cases. And patients with light or no symptoms will be reported as positive cases, but will not be included in confirmed cases. But studies in Germany, the Netherlands, Canada and others have found these asymptomatic patients can still spread the virus, so why not count them? And it seems the Chinese communist regime is spreading hate propaganda against Japan and the U.S. A photo circulating online of a banner which read, Congratulations to the U.S. epidemic and wish the Japanese epidemic a smooth sailing. It was posted on a storefront in Liaoning province, which is located in northeastern China, bordering North Korea and the Yellow Sea. The banner has already been taken down, and local police say they are investigating the incident. Some people on the Internet are agreeing with the banner's sentiments, while others are criticizing the shop for being insensitive and promoting humanity's annihilation. 
China reports a 21 million drop in mobile users for the past three months. What does the drastic drop mean? An expert says virus deaths might have contributed to account closings. NTD's Juliet Song has the details. China has lost over 21 million mobile users in the last three months. The sharp decline is unusual as Chinese use their phones for pretty much everything. Cell phones are an indispensable part of life. Only in extreme circumstances would people stop using their cell phones. Chinese use phones for everything from cashless payments for just about anything to paying rent and transport. But in January and February, three Chinese mobile carriers saw a sharp decline in users. Users increased during the same period in 2019, 2018 and 2017. It can be said without a doubt that the over 21 million drop in user numbers is related to the CCP virus outbreak. Tang says virus deaths might have contributed to the count. An insider working in China's telecom industry told him that the lost users all met a specific criteria. The accounts they used required no minimum spending and had zero spending activity for the past month. According to the insider, accounts that require no minimum spending make up about 5% of China's total mobile users. Owners of these accounts tend to be in low-income groups in China's Midwest area. Many are migrant workers and college students. China has over 280 million migrant workers and 28 million college students. Assuming that about 5% of them have such accounts and stopped using their cell phones, that's about 15 million. There's still a 6 million gap that can't be explained. I speculate hundreds of thousands or perhaps a million Chinese people have died from the CCP virus. Of course, there will be no account activities after the death, which contributed to the sharp drop in numbers. Days after the data was released, China's top anti-corruption organ announced changes for the three major Chinese carriers. Authorities said the service options were too complex and needed to be refined. But Tong says the data reflects, to a certain extent, the casualties and economic impact brought by the virus. He said it's likely the Chinese authorities are using the new changes as a cover. Reporting by Juliet Song, NTD News, New York. Debate is heating up today in the Senate. On Sunday, the chamber failed to pass an emergency aid package, one that's designed to financially help Americans during the pandemic and boost the economy. Tensions are rising on Capitol Hill after Senate Democrats again blocked a bill aimed at addressing the virus pandemic's domestic impact. This bill is going to help every small business in this country. It's not a bailout. It provides up to $350 billion for small businesses for the next eight weeks to keep going. The Monday vote ended 49-46, falling far short of the 60 it needs to pass. Likewise, the same vote failed 47-47 on Sunday. The over $1.5 trillion bill includes financial aid for regular Americans, small businesses, and critically affected industries, including airlines. Democrats say it gives too much help to corporations and too little to help workers and health care providers. The Senate Republican bill put corporations first. But Republicans have chastised them for delaying much-needed aid and for including provisions they say have nothing to do with the current crisis, like funding for renewable energy and new standards for airline emissions. Democrats won't let us fund hospitals or save small businesses unless they get to dust off the Green New Deal. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin offering optimism this morning, saying that a bipartisan deal was very close. The Federal Reserve is about to go all out to keep the economy moving. It's lifting limits on the amount of money it will lend to governments and businesses at this time. As people stay home and tax payments are deferred, businesses and governments around the country desperately need money to pay their bills. The Federal Reserve can help. It prints the U.S. dollar, then lends it to the federal government or central banks. Usually, the Fed limits the amount of money it prints to keep currency rates and inflation relatively stable. Last week, it was limiting its lending at $700 billion. The Fed is now lifting that limit and will lend as much as necessary to stabilize the economy and limit job losses. It's also introducing new programs to get money to struggling businesses, something it's never done before. It launched a new facility today that didn't, they didn't have in 08 or 09, and that's to help support corporate bonds. And the next program that they're going to unveil 
is going to be more addressed to small and medium-sized businesses. It's an all-out effort by the Fed and beyond what was used to help in the 2008 financial crash. Printing money sounds good, but the U.S. taxpayer will eventually have to foot the bill for new government debt. Markets initially responded positively to the Fed's news, but fell from there. News that the Senate stimulus package was delayed had a negative impact. The Dow and S&P 500 fell around 3% each. The Nasdaq fell 0.27%. Apple shares lost almost 5% today. It means the tech giant is no longer a $1 trillion company. It's now lost almost a third of its value since February 12th. New York now has over 20,000 positive cases of the CCP virus. That's more than any other state. But federal agencies will start building four emergency hospitals there this week. NTD's Miguel Moreno has more from the governor. FEMA will start building four emergency hospitals in the Javits Convention Center this week. That would total to 1,000 more hospital beds for patients in the state with the most confirmed cases in the country. But the governor is also asking hospitals to increase their number of beds by 50 percent. All hospitals have now been ordered to increase their capacity a minimum of 50 percent. I've asked them to try to find a way to increase their capacity 100 percent, right? Patients will be treated at the Javits Center hospitals when the city's hospitals are full. Cuomo said about 320 federal staff members will work at the center. He also said the state has enough supplies for health staff already, but is asking President Trump to order businesses to make more medical supplies that they may need in the future. First, we're getting the existing medical staff all the equipment that they need. We have all the equipment they need. I can't promise what happens in the future if the federal government doesn't step up and actually do the production and supply. As of Monday, John Hopkins University reports a total of over 20,000 positive cases of coronavirus in New York. The Army Corps will build three other hospitals in the state in an effort to increase its hospital capacity from 50,000 to a minimum of 75,000. Miguel Moreno, NTD News, New York. The first of two U.S. military hospital ships were dispatched on Monday to boost hospital bed capacity as the number of U.S. coronavirus cases swells. The Pentagon said the U.S. naval ship Mercy departed its base from San Diego with nearly 900 staff on board to take on non-coronavirus patients and allow local personnel to manage those on shore with the virus. Mercy is headed to Los Angeles. It has 1,000 beds on board. California Governor Gavin Newsom wrote to President Trump, requesting that the Mercy dock in Los Angeles until September. The ship was thought to be headed to Seattle, where the outbreak is more severe, but plans changed course after it started to look like California would need it more. Mercy's main function is supporting the U.S. military abroad, but it can also be used for disaster relief and humanitarian operations. President Trump said on Sunday, hospital ship USNS Comfort would go to New York City. New Jersey set up its second drive through coronavirus testing site in Monmouth County today. Commuters waited in their cars in long lines. The state hopes to take pressure off the first testing site, which reached capacity on Saturday, 35 minutes after it opened in Bergen County. Authorities closed it three hours later. New Jersey planned a third testing site in Camden County, but is still waiting on equipment. Camden County authorities say the huge demand for testing kits is holding up the site. The CCP virus can cause severe breathing difficulties. That means ventilators are critical but scarce. America's top automakers are now joining the manufacturing effort. Ventilators are in short supply around the world. To meet the demand, U.S. automakers like Ford, GM, and Tesla are now working to start manufacturing them. What we're seeing on a purely voluntary basis, based on the leadership of this administration, we're seeing the greatest mobilization of the industrial base since World War II. GM announced on Friday they are now working with Seattle-based ventilator company Vintech to make more. Uh, you know, over the weekend, a lot of was work was done to identify what parts are needed and where the shortages are. Um, and we know that GM has reached out to its entire supply base to try to identify those critical parts. 
GM CEO Mary Barra said in a press release, we are working closely with Vintech to rapidly scale up production of their critically important respiratory products to support our country's fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Vintech's CEO said the company can usually produce 150 per month, but by working with GM, that number could reach 1 to 2,000 per month. And Trump is encouraging other auto companies to help make even more. Posting in a tweet on Sunday, Ford, General Motors, and Tesla are being given the go-ahead to make ventilators and other metal products. Fast. Go for it, auto execs. Let's see how good you are. Ford and Tesla both said they would also start working on making ventilators to help during this pandemic. Melina Weisskopf, NTD News, New York. CVS is stepping up to help its employees who don't have the option of working from home. CVS pharmacies are remaining open, so pharmacists, techs, store managers and employees all have to go into work. The company announced it will give $500 bonuses to its employees who have to be there during the coronavirus pandemic. CVS CEO Larry Merlo said in a statement, the move is a way for the company to help the employees have peace of mind in uncertain times. Also, the company is hiring 50,000 more people. They're looking to fill full-time, part-time and temporary positions. Washington, D.C.'s mayor is using the National Guard to keep people away from the city's cherry blossoms. The beloved cherry trees are in bloom in the nation's capital. Most years, it's a time for festivities and gatherings, but this year, it's a problem. Officials are urging people to stay away, but it's been hard to convince people to miss the chance to see the beloved blooms. Police are closing roads and restricting pedestrian access. Now the National Guard is getting involved to enforce social distancing. Iran has refused medical assistance from the U.S. to help fight the CCP virus. Instead, the Iranian regime wants the U.S. to lift sanctions. But Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says the sanctions do not target imports on food, medicine or medical equipment. Iran, the Middle Eastern country hit hardest by the CCP virus, refusing to accept medical assistance from the U.S. The Iranian regime mimicking a Chinese conspiracy theory about the source of the CCP virus, saying U.S. medicine is a way to spread the virus more. Instead, the Iranian regime calling for the U.S. to lift sanctions, but Secretary of State Mike Pompeo making it clear the sanctions do not target imports of food, medicine, medical equipment or other humanitarian goods. Pompeo blaming the regime for ignoring early warnings about the virus from its own health officials and denying the first death for at least nine days. In early February, as the outbreak in Wuhan, China worsened, the Iranian regime banned flights coming from China except for Mahan Air, which the U.S. designated as a provider of support to terrorism in 2007. Pompeo saying 55 flights on Mahan Air between Tehran and China led to further infections of the Iranian people. He says at least five countries' first cases were directly imported from Iran, putting millions more lives at risk. And Italy has taken new measures to stop the spread of the virus. It recorded 601 deaths on Monday, bringing its total to over 6,000. Some good news from Italy as its death rate slows for two days in a row. The number of new cases fell as well. But on the front line, at least 23 doctors have already died from fighting the virus. And there are fears it could get worse. Almost 5,000 health care workers are believed to be infected. Hospitals are strained. So are cemeteries. Normally, this structure stocks about 30 coffins. But in this period, we have reached over 100. Italy has taken additional measures to stop the spread. On Sunday, police were checking passengers' temperatures at Naples train station. This after all non-essential travel was banned on the weekend. In Sicily, grocery stores are no longer allowed to open on the weekends. That meant customers waiting outside in the rain for them to open again Monday morning. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has tested negative in an initial test for the novel coronavirus, a spokesperson confirmed on Monday. The Olympic Committee is reconsidering postponing the Summer Games after insisting they go on as planned in Tokyo, despite the spread of the CCP virus. The International Olympic Committee started discussions on Sunday about if the Tokyo Summer Olympics should go ahead as planned. At the emergency meeting, the organizers discussed a possible postponement of the Games because of the CCP virus. They are looking to push the start date of the Games back by a year or more, but say they won't cancel the Games. 
The decision of the IOC of considering possible postponement is in line with what I just said, to hold the event in a complete form. If that becomes difficult, we will think of the athletes first and foremost. We may have no option but to consider postponing the Games. Up to this point, the Olympic Committee and organizers in Tokyo had insisted the Games would go ahead. Athletes, countries and sponsors all had concerns about the Olympics this year. Many refused to participate. U.S. track and swimming called for a postponement. The head of the Olympic Committee acknowledged that his earlier insistence that the Games go forward may have confused people. He says it was a rational approach, but perhaps at odds with the general public. The Olympics have never before been postponed or canceled during peacetime. The committee said that a final decision should come after four weeks. And deserted streets and shuttered office buildings in the Indian capital on Monday. This as a lockdown to halt virus spread began. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is urging people to stay at home and save themselves. The usually bustling streets of New Delhi were silent on Monday as the city was put under lockdown until March 31 in an attempt to keep citizens indoors to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. The order to shut down the capital came hours after hundreds of millions of Indians followed Prime Minister Narendra Modi's calls for people to self-isolate for a day. The city's borders with neighbouring states will be sealed and public transport will also be suspended. Indian Railways, which carries more than 25 million commuters a day, cancelled all passenger train services until the end of the month. India has registered over 340 cases of coronavirus with seven deaths. Medical experts say a lack of testing facilities could be hiding the true extent of cases in India, which has a population of more than 1.3 billion people. Prime Minister Boris Johnson ordered Britons to stay home today. People are now only allowed out for basic necessities or can otherwise face a fine. All shops selling non-essential goods are to close. The new measures will last for three weeks. In the face of such circumstances, many people are finding hope in acts of kindness. Our UK correspondent Jane Wirrell has the story. Unusual scenes as Britain's pubs, cafes and restaurants close their doors. I know how difficult this is and how it seems to go against the freedom-loving instincts of the, of the British people. The venues can still provide takeaways. I understand the pubs are being closed, but six months is a bit of a long time to not go to a pub, for us English person especially. Johnson said the situation will be reviewed every month to see if he can relax any of the measures. The government says the state will cover the wages of many of those who now don't have jobs. In response to such sweeping changes, many people are finding hope through acts of kindness. Some people have set up local community groups to help people with their shopping, pick up their prescriptions, or with whatever support they need. People are, are desperate right now and worried. Um, but still, people are, you know, in that position are, are thinking of others. So it's really quite amazing. Others have been slipping notes through their neighbours' doors. This local Facebook group quickly grew to have almost 3,000 people in it. A leaflet that says, hi, I'm your neighbour. Um, if you're self-isolating and you need any essentials, give me a call. It just uh, really saddens me to see all the, um, the things that are going on in the media. And, and I just thought if we can focus a little bit of that energy on being kind in our communities, then it would just make this time so much easier for people. As millions face isolation, groups like this are reminding people that they are not alone. Jane Wirrell, NTD News. Here at China In Focus, we bring you first-hand information from inside China. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest updates.